Hey everyone, welcome back to the table. I'm Scott and we're going to talk about the top 10 tips to 3D printing. So let's not waste time and let's get started. So tip number one, getting an extra resin bath or vat. Now over time you have to change out what is called the FEP. The FEP is a thin plastic sheet, kind of reminds you of extra thick saran wrap that goes onto the bottom of your vat and it sits on top of the printer itself and lets lock light shine through it. Now this is a critical piece. If it is blurry, if it's dirty, if it's gross by any means, there's stuff stuck to it, there's holes in it, you're going to have problems printing or worse. So changing this out when it starts to get is the best way to go. And one of the indicators is you start getting failed prints, you need to check it. Now really you should inspect that every single time you print and make sure that it is in good shape. When you do have to change it, it is a process. It takes a bit. There's about a million screws. You have to unscrew them all. You don't really want to take the time to be able to switch out that FEP before you start printing again. So the best, easiest way to do that is to get an extra back. Uh, these are inexpensive and it's going to vary greatly depending on what kind of printer you have. Tip number two, pre-wash. This is one of our biggest tips. It is important to keep your washing fluid as clean as possible. The cleaner your washing fluid is, the better your prints are going to turn out. If, you're, if your washing fluid is saturated with you know, resin debris and what, whatever else is you know, floating around in that thing, it is going to be on your prints. And then when you cure your prints, you're going to be curing that junk on there as well. And it's just going to degrade the quality of your prints. If you want to keep crisp, clean, perfect looking ones, you need to keep your fluid clean. Now, depending on which way you go, if you're going water-based, it's a little bit easier to keep it clean. But if you're going alcohol-based, then it becomes very expensive to change that out frequently. So what we do is we create a pre-wash bin. You basically get any type of bin that you can close up and seal up um, that is going to prevent the alcohol from evaporating. And then your used wash will go into your used washing fluid will go into that bin and then before you actually put it in the wash it like in using it on your washing station then what you can do is dip it in there several times and make sure that you get the bulk of the re of the resin extra bits off before you put it into the final rinse now this extends the life considerably for your wash for your your final wash as we're going to call it so that brings us to tip number three. When do you change your wash fluid? The tip here is your best indicator is when your print plate, when you wipe your print plate clean, it, it looks shiny afterwards. You actually can't wipe off the residue off the print plate. It still looks shiny. That shininess is a good indicator. Now there's a secondary indicator. If you look at the actual models or whatever you're printing itself, and they've had a moment or two to dry and they still look shiny. That's another indicator that your wash needs to be changed out. That brings us to tip number four. Tip number four is using a hand air blower, something that you might use to clean out a PC. Um, you can buy these on Amazon from anywhere from $20 to $40, depending on how fancy a one you want to get. And we can plug it in and recharge it as needed. Now, what we use this for is when you're done cleaning off the print plate itself, sometimes there is... A little bit of alcohol still stuck in the screws or the cracks that are on the print plate itself and so if you use an air blower you can get this material out now why is this important it's important because when you introduce your washing fluid into the resin itself it's going to start breaking down the resin i mean that's exactly what it's meant for so you don't want any of that in on your print plate because it's just going to degrade the quality of your prints and not only that, but you can cause print failures or other things to happen. So using an air blower will get all of the extra liquid out. And then once you're done with that, you can take a paper towel and just simply wipe around the edges and make sure that it's completely clean and there's no extra residue floating around on it. So tip number five, a toothbrush. The good news is they're pretty inexpensive. You can go to the dollar store and get four or five of them for you know around a dollar, depending on where you live. One of the purposes is if models need a little bit of extra attention, like if they come out of the, the washing station and they still have some residue on them, we can take a toothbrush and scrub them a little bit inside of the wash itself and then put it back in there, let it run, and then we now have a clean part. The other thing, and what we use for every single time we clean the print plate, is that 
I will actually use the brush and put it partially into the washing station and then use the brush to scrub the top of the, of the plate or the, the printing side of the plate. This is really important because you want your print plate to be as clean as possible. If it's dirty, then you increase the chance of having some type of separation from the printing plate or failures further down the road. You want as much adherence to that plate as possible. So cleaning it every time is gonna be key and important. Tip number six, and that takes us to talking about the print plate a little bit more. Now, depending on how much of a hurry you're in, just like you can with the vat, you can you can purchase an additional print plate. And it, our process takes anywhere from six to 10 minutes. The speed is a key for us, so we, having an extra print plate where we can take our time doing the rest of the process to get the part off the plate and make sure it's clean and do what we need to do is really, really important. So we actually have an additional print plate for, for our printers. Now, if you have multiple of the same printer, then getting one is not so bad because then you can just leapfrog them or along down the line. Tip number seven, that is workstation mats or changeable paper or cover that you can put over your area. As much as you think that you're going to be able to be perfect and not have spills, it is incredibly important that you cover because you will get spills. There's a couple ways to do this. We actually use both methods. So we take uh, thicker construction paper that you can get from the hardware store. Usually it's used for flooring that goes in, in between the flooring. You can get a roll anywhere from 10 to $20, again, depending on where you live. You can use this to cover your workstation. Now, alternatively, you can use um, disposable tablecloths. These work really well as well. Now, the other thing that you can use is a silicon mat. Now, there's a bunch of them that are out there. Um, I have some links down below for some of the ones that we use. That's going to take us to number eight, which is your workflow. Now, what do I mean by workflow? Your workflow is the process that you use to be able to print your parts, clean your parts, and cure your parts. If, if you think about this, you want to be as efficient as possible when setting this up. Now, there are constraints. You know, if you have limited space, you have to you know, take one station down to put another station up. There's a lot of two-in-one washing and curing stations that make it harder to be able to do some things. But from an overall standpoint, the key here is you want to think about the flow of how you're doing your steps and optimizing it to making it as efficient as possible. So an example here is what you wouldn't want to do is have your print all the way over on the left that you're taking off, and then you have to carry that all the way to the other side of whatever space that you're using, a table or counter or whatever you have, taking that all the way over to the other side of the thing to be able to pre-wash it or put it into the washing station. <clears throat> what you want to be able to do is take your print directly off the printer and put it right into the washing bin. So we're going to give you an example of the flow that we use and how it works and gives you some ideas to think about it. If you have questions about this, you're wondering what you should do, feel free to describe and put comments down below. Or if you want to join our Discord, you can do that as well. And we will be happy to answer questions. So for our setup, we our steps are print, pre-wash, wash. Then we will let it sit while it dries. We'll remove the supports, and then we will cure it. And we have our setup, so there's very little movement in between those stations. But we also have enough space in between the stations that if there was a little spill or some type of issue, it's not going to spill on one of the other machines. Make sure that you are keeping the distance that you're traveling to go from one station to another as small or as short as possible. If you're using a tray, make sure that that tray is in a spot that you can use it immediately and put it onto it instead of having again, carry it all the way over to wherever this tray might be. Bring the tray to you if that is not possible. Tip number nine. Tip number nine is taking off your supports before you cure your models. A lot of times what happens is they're curing the model with the supports on. When you pull the support off, it's going to leave a little divot in there. Now, as a bonus tip, if something like this does happen, you can take a little drop of resin, put it in there, and then cure it, either with a UV light or putting it in your cure station again. And then you can do that and then sand it down. However, post-processing work takes time, and you can easily get in a trap where you are spending hours and hours of doing post-processing support. So the quickest, easiest way to be able to minimize this is to take your sports off before you cure them. You can also give it a light sanding, making sure that you wear a mask, wear glasses, wear gloves, you know, that type of thing. Make sure you're safe. Be safe when you're doing this. But you can also sand it before curing as well, and that makes it a little bit easier to manipulate the material 
and makes it look smoother and more natural after you're done hearing it. Tip number 10. This is a printer pull tool. That was really hard to say. I don't know why, but it was. What this does is it's a little tiny, um, almost looks like a stamp that you're putting into the vat to use the cleaning function. And really what that does is the entire LED lights it up and creates a solid layer on the bottom of the, the vat. And then you can take and pull that up. Um, you put that down and then you do your curing. And what is helpful is that you can use that to actually pull up the thing to, to be able to hold it. Not only that, but you can actually hold onto it. Because if you've tried to use pull one of these up without using this tool, you have to pinch it with your glove finger and it tends to get a little bit slippery and it's hard to handle. So if you have this tool, this makes it that much easier to be able to pull that up, hold it, clean it off a little bit to get some of that extra resin off so you don't waste it, and get up and running. Now I'm going to have a link to it down below. It's something I found on Thingverse. So great credit to the, the person that I found that made it. We really appreciate you doing something like that. If you have questions or comments, make sure you put them down below. If you think these tips are junk, let us know. Let us know down below. Or if you do something cool that we didn't cover, let us know because I'm always on the lookout for new tips and new tricks that are going to make it easier and quicker for us to print. All right, good luck and happy printing. And until next time when we see you at the table.